One Piece episode 871. Spectacular job, writers. I just, Captain Cordy, the man fell forward. Luffy down in the hole because they done punched each other at the same time. Luffy crawls out, I'm like, yes, he won. You know, I'm hyped, juiced up. But then as he gets out of the hole, stands up, here's Captain Cordy standing over him. I said, baby, come on now. Come on with the come on. <laughs> I'm tired. But then he asked Luffy, are you going to come back and fight Big Mom one day? Luffy like, hell yeah, because I'm going to be king of the pirates. You know, Luffy don't pay about that. He said no business. And he smiles and he's like, you seem very falling into the future. And then he fell on his back. I know Brule finna have a heart attack when she find out about this. That girl said he ain't never touched no ground. He ain't even slept on the ground. I really appreciate how intentional he was in that moment because if we being realistic, he could have fell face forward and just stayed there. He didn't have to get up. He did that on purpose to show his respect. But what really got me is Luffy going over to him, putting his hat on top of his mouth and covering him, and then going to find Brule so he can get out the mirror. The world could take some notes from this fight, okay? Back in the day, people used to tussle, duke it out, and get it over with. But still show respect afterwards. You know, sportsmanship. Bravo. Bravo to the writers. Because Luffy could have left him there looking humiliated and crazy. But he didn't. He knew. I also like that in a couple episodes before we got a little background on why he was covering his mouth. Because he was beating folks up for talk about his face. And they took it out on his sister Brule. And that's why she got them scratches on her face. And ever since then, he'd be covering his mouth. But for him to feel so comfortable removing his scarf because his younger sister interfered with the fight with, between him and Luffy. And tried to humiliate him. He said, babe, I'm going to do the same. Humiliate myself out of respect for Luffy. Because Luffy doing his big one. So let me be a respectable man. Tens all around. Not only did Luffy give that man some joy, because I'm certain he's never been rumbling and tumbling with nobody like that ever. He gave him some thrill, if you will. He also gave that man freedom to show that face off without embarrassment. And Luffy said, let me put this over your face just in case you change your mind. <laughs> you know, if you wake up and you're like, ooh, my scarf, I got you covered. <laughs> Now, Sanji, Sanji needs to get focused. Bro, you in the alley kissing people. We supposed to be on the lookout for Luffy coming out of this mirror. What are we doing right now? He need to get his head in the game. But the best part of the entire episode was Peckham's. Oh, I wanted Peckham's to end on the right side of history. I swear. This entire time, my boy has been torn completely. Him coming through with that Rey Mysterio mask, having brulee. Oh, chef's kiss. I don't know what's going to come next, but I'm a little nervous because a lot of people in Peckham's, where are you going to go after this? Are you going back to the tribe? What's happening? He and me, they loyal to the soil, so I feel it. Lastly, Beji and Chiffon, they're actually my favorite couple out here. Beji is so calm. Like, Beji's calmness is admirable at this point. He's so gentle with Chiffon. He's like, that's why I like you, girl. You got spunk. We're going to see this through because that's what my wife wants. They're just the perfect match. And I'm so happy she gets a second chance at life, hopefully, because I don't know how this is going to end. But child, I really hope they make it to Fluffy Island before Big Mom burn their whole ship down because she on the ass like dirt on grass, okay?